Maccabim Shani, two Maccabees, three. Now, when the holy city was inhabited with all peace, and the Torah was kept very well because of the holiness of On Yahu, the high priest, and his hatred of wickedness, it came to pass that even the kings themselves did honor the place and magnified the temple with their best gifts, so much so that Seleucus of Asia, of his own revenues, bore all the costs, belonging to the service of the sacrifices. But one Shimon of the tribe of Binyamin, who was made governor of the temple, fell out with the high priest, and disorder, rather, about disorder in the city. And when he could not overcome Onyahu, he got him to Apollonius, the son of Thar, rather, Tarasius, who then was governor of Silo Aram and Phoenicia, and told him that the treasury in Yerushalayim was full of infinite sums of money, so that the multitude of their riches, which did not pertain to the account of the sacrifices, was innumerable, and that it was possible to bring all into the king's hand. Now, when Apollonius came to the king, and had showed him of the money whereof he was told, the king chose out Heliodorus, his treasurer, and sent him with the commandment to bring him the foresaid money. So forthwith Heliodorus, rather, Heliodorus took his journey under a color of visiting the cities of Silo Aram and Phoenicia, but indeed to fulfill the king's purpose. And when he was come to Yaru Shalayim and had been courteously received of the high priest of the city, he told him what intelligence was given of the money and declared where, rather, wherefore he came and asked if these things were so indeed. Then the high priest told him that there was such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children, and that some of it belonged to Hyrcanus, son of Toviyahu, a man of great dignity, and not as that wicked Shimon had misinformed. The sum whereof in all was four hundred talents of silver and two hundred of gold. And that it was altogether impossible that such wrongs should be done unto them that had committed it to the holiness of the place and to the majesty and inviable, rather, inviable sanctity of the temple, honored over all the world. But Heliodorus, because of the king's commandment given him, said, that in any wise it must be brought into the king's treasury. So at the day which he appointed, he entered in to order this matter, wherefore there was no small agony throughout the whole city. But the priests, prostrating themselves before the altar, in their priests' vestments, called unto heaven, upon him that made a Torah, concerning things given to be kept, that they should safely be preserved for such as had committed them to be kept. Then whoso had looked the high priest in the face, it would have wounded his heart, for his countenance and the changing of his color declared the inward agony of his mind, for the man was so compassed with fear and horror of the body that it was manifest to them that looked upon him. What sorrow he had now in his heart! Others ran flocking out of their houses to the general supplication because the place was like to come into contempt. And the women, girt with sackcloth under their breasts, abounded in the streets, and the virgins that were kept in ran, some to the gates and some to the walls, and others looked out of the windows. And all, holding their hands toward heaven, made supplication. Then it would have pitied a man to see the falling down of the multitude of all sorts, and the fear of the high priest being in such agony. They then called upon El Shaddai Yahuwah to keep the things committed of trust safe and sure for those that had committed them. 
Nevertheless, Heliodorus executed that which was decreed. Now as he was the there present himself with his guard about the treasury, Yahweh Sevaoth and the prince of all power caused a great apparition so that all that presumed to come in with him, rather presumed to come in with him, were astonished at the power of Elohim and fainted and were sore afraid. For there appeared unto them a horse with a terrible rider upon him, and adorned with a very fair covering, and he ran fiercely and smote at Helodorus with his forefeet. And it seemed that he that sat upon the horse had complete harness of gold. Moreover, two other young men appeared before him, notable in strength, excellent in beauty and comely in apparel, who stood by him on either side and scourged him continually and gave him many sore stripes. And Helodorus fell suddenly unto the ground and was compassed with great darkness, but they that were with him took him up and put him into a litter. Thus him that lately came with a great train and with all his guard into the said treasury, they carried out, being unable to help himself with his weapons. And manifestly they acknowledge the power of Elohim, for he by the hand of Elohim was cast down and lay speechless without all hope of life. But they praised Yahweh that had miraculously honored his own place, for the temple, which a little afore was full of fear and trouble, when El Shaddai Yahuwah appeared, was filled with joy and gladness. Then straightway certain of Helodorus's friends prayed on Yahu that he would call upon El Elian to grant him his life, who lay ready to give up the Ruach. So the high priest, suspecting lest the king should misconceived that some treachery had been done to Helodorus by the Yahudim, offered a sacrifice for the health of the man. Now as the high priest was making an atonement, the same young man in the same clothing appeared and stood beside Heliodorus, saying, Give on Yahu, the high priest, great thanks, so much so as for his sake. Yahuwah has granted you life and seeing that you have been scourged from heaven. Declare unto all men the mighty power of Elohim. And when they had spoken these words, they appeared no more. So, Helodorus, rather, Heliodorus, after he had offered sacrifice unto Yahweh, and made great vows unto him that had saved his life, and saluted on Yahu returned with his host to the king. Then testified he to all men the works of the great Elohim, which he had seen with his eyes. And when the king saw Heliodorus, who might be a fit man to be sent yet once again to Yerushalayim, he said, If you have any enemy or traitor, send him thither, and you shall receive him well scourged. If he escape with his life, for in that place, no doubt, there is an especial power of Elohim. For he that dwells in heaven has his eye on that place and defends it, and he beats and destroys them that come to hurt it. And the things concerning Heliodorus and the keeping of the treasury fell out on this sort,